previously on FNAF Unsolved. Five children suddenly a vanished. A small child was thrown into the mouth of the star A small girl named Charlotte crying before After her mysterious death backfired. Killing there was his one own similarity daughter. between all the children, however. They had all visited and gone missing at the same location and Freddy Fazbear of Fazbear Entertainment. He experimented with remnant, children's souls, and animatronics that were designed to kill. This week on FNAF Unsolved, we take a step forward in time to the end of the murderer, William Atkins, and the fire that freed the souls of all of the dead children. This is the end. Or is it? Hello and welcome back to FNAF Unsolved. This is episode 8. Can you believe it? Anyway, today we are being joined by FNAF theorist, web designer, and underrated YouTuber, Welcome Underscore. Hey, um, it's me. Now before we start, I have something to ask you. It's embarrassing. Go ahead. We've never really been on a voice chat before, so I've never had to ask whether your name is Underscore or under underscore score. Oh no, it's it's just underscore. <laughs> Good to know. It confused me at first. <laughs> uh, I was like underscore under uh, yeah. Anyway, you've got your own FNAF website, haven't you? Yeah. Um, I like to call it the Rabbit Hole, and you can find it at the FNAFRabbitHole.com. I designed it all, and it's got timelines, theories, and it can be your main portal to all FNAF resources. Well. I should probably update it every once in a while. I will say it looks fantastic and I wish I had those kinds of skills. Unfortunately, I've only got a sad Google site for all your FNAF Unsolved needs. It's got character profiles, updates, and of course, the weekly FNAF quiz. I'm here to announce another winner. Here we go. In third place is Pat. In second place is ProGamer200145. The winner of the third FNAF quiz is drum roll please <laughs> are you gonna do a drum roll? I thought I did I did do a drum roll <laughs> oh my I, I couldn't hear it at first oh oh god how do the drum rolls keep getting worse the winner of the third FNAF quiz is Benjamin Jones congratulations can we show them some love in the comments below anyway let's begin today's exciting video. 2023, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is no more. The places were closed and abandoned for decades. No more Freddy Fazbear, no more Purple Guys. It's the end of the story. Well, not exactly. In this universe exists a power, an energy source that powers living creatures. This energy is called Remnant, and it is believed that it is the thing possessing and controlling the savage animatronics. Freddy contains the soul of Gabriel, Bonnie contains the soul of Jeremy, Chica contains the soul of Susie, Foxy contains the soul of Fritz. The children were all killed by William Afton, co-founder of Fazbear Entertainment, and it's no surprise that what they wanted was revenge, so that's what they got. Sounds like an epic action movie trailer, and they wanted revenge. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine if the FNAF movie ended up being an action movie? Couldn't really imagine it being an action movie. What if it was a romance movie? <laughs> oh god, no. No more FNAF shipping, please. William Afton still had a job to do. He had successfully killed off a number of children for whatever reason, but now they possess the animatronics, and they are out to kill him instead. Afton's final job was to get rid of the animatronics. And that is what he did. I'm interested in what way you'd most like to die. I've asked this before, but I'm just interested because everyone's different. Um, 
That's a good question. Imagine, like, jumping into the Bermuda Triangle just out of curiosity. <laughs> oh, you can see what's down there, yeah. Um, what about you? I, I actually just wonder what it's like to die in space. Well, I can imagine it's pretty horrible, because there will there's just be no one there to experience it, and you probably will be gone forever. I, I'm also, I'm pretty sure your body doesn't decompose when you're in space. I could be wrong. So you'd just be floating away? Forever. <laughs> I guess so. That's hilarious. In the missing children's incident, there was one more child, Cassidy. It is believed that she takes the body of Golden Freddy, an old springlock animatronic that glitches through walls and makes people hallucinate. The question that everybody has on their minds, however, is why is Cassidy the most powerful? Why is she the one that can breach through walls and haunt people to a further extent than the other kids? Was she related to William? Or is there something bigger going on here? It is unknown, but on security footage, there was one last entity present that was attacking Afton. It was not wearing a suit like the other four. It was a dead child, a vengeful spirit, that would not let go. With the power of five spirits, Afton was being haunted, and it led to his death in his spring bonny costume. Philosophical question of the day. You have five deadly spirits chasing you, and you're trapped in a room. How do you escape? Stop dreaming. <laughs> Perfect answer, 10 out of 10. Other answers include wake up, stop playing FNAF all the time, and stop believing in God. Was the death of William Afton intentional? No, it wasn't. But it also wasn't his death. The Spring Bonnie costume is a spring lock suit meaning it's made from spring locks. These locks can activate when water is applied to it, just like how the tears from the crying child was the thing that closed Fredbear's mouth in the bite of 83. The dampness of the abandoned pizzeria room activated the spring locks in Afton's suit, leading to his... death? Afton didn't die at all. Remnant is the thing that kept him alive. Blood poured out from the suit, but Remnant made Afton immortal, much like how his son, Michael, became immortal after being injected with Remnant from the scooper. Father and son, in a springlock failure. Father and son, immortal. They aren't exactly immortal, however. The one thing that neutralizes the effects of Remnant is heat. The one thing that can forever kill off William Afton and set the children's souls free is high temperatures. How high is high? Like water boiling point? 212 degrees Fahrenheit? You mean 100 degrees Celsius? Uh, maybe. Okay, let me go on a little rant here. Why do we need Fahrenheit? Celsius is easy enough to remember. Freezing point, zero. Boiling point, 100. I guess that makes sense, but I guess we're both just used to the ones in our countries. It's just a silly way to do it. Like, I also hate the imperial system. How tall is, like, six foot? Why can't you just say, like, 1.8 meters? I feel like the world would be more connected if everyone measured in the same units. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. No, uh. it does. It matters. Rant over. 2023. Freddy Fazbear's no more. Say hello to the place 30 years in the future. This is Fazbear's Fright. A horror attraction containing everything Freddy's. There's boxes of old animatronics, unused suits, packed arcade machines, and a living spring bonnie out to attack you. After decades, Afton becomes the identity of Springtrap, gone completely insane. With everyone in their right places, a fire is lit, and the children's souls are set free. Could this be 
the end of the story. Time for my rant. There is too many endings. Yep, just breaking the fourth wall here. FNAF 3 was supposed to be the ending, then 4 happened, and it was all apparently a dream. Then there was another fire later on, then Ultimate Custom Night happened. I mean, will the games ever really end? Well, they won't, because in the words of Springtrap, they always come back. I think it's I always come back. Perfectionist. The location went up in flames in the year of 2023. However, what is the real story of this fire? Is someone onto William Afton after all of these years? And is it possible that this truly is the ending of everything? Let's get into the theories. Before we do that, two things. Firstly, a warning to everyone on the year 2023. We are officially three years away, so be on the lookout. Secondly, why did it take people so long to figure out that, oh, Afton isn't dead, let's destroy these pizzerias? Yeah, that's very true. About 30 years, I guess. William Afton and Henry must be old. Yeah, and I'm, I must say, Will looks pretty good for his age. Obvious sarcasm is obvious. The first theory is behind who did it. There's two people we know who could potentially be on to Afton. Firstly, is Henry, the other co-founder. After getting his daughter killed by Afton, Henry must be furious. It's possible Afton was charged with a few decades in prison after Henry discovered the truth. Secondly, is Michael, his son. He was supposedly working as the night guard in different locations to find his father and get rid of him for what he has done. After all, he did say that he was going to go and find him. Father, it's me, Michael. I did it. I found it. It was right where you said it would be. They were all there. They didn't recognize me at first, but then they thought I was you. <laughs> and I found her. I put her back together, just like you asked me to. She's free now. But something is wrong with me. I should be dead. But I'm not. I've been living in shadows. There is only one thing left for me to do now. I'm going to come find you. I'm going to come find you. Who was behind the fire? Michael or Henry? Michael. Henry is like 70 at this point. He's got like a walking stick. Can't even see a fire from a few meters away. You mean a few feet? Okay, okay, clever clogs. What do you think then? Um, I, I do agree that it's it's probably Michael, because he's, he's got the motive to kill his father in a fire. Well, we finally agree on something. The final theory might not even be a theory. Did Afton die to the fire? He should have, but it's possible that he escaped the fire. It's not the end, not yet. With the Great Fire of 23, two suspects for arson, and a killer who is potentially still out there, murdering others like a monster, this case remains unsolved.